I am Dr. Sharada Jain and the Secretary General of Delhi Gynecologist Forum, also the Director of Life Care IVF. Today I am going to speak about ovarian reserve testing in infertility. As this slide shows and as you all know, that the best gametes give the best result. Ovarian reserve is important whenever you are planning a fertility preservation for fertility outcome, for response to ovarian stimulation, predict pregnancy rate, monitor fertility decline and fertility after chemotherapy and cancer treatment. This slide shows that as early as three weeks there is an appearance of germ cells and by six to eight weeks, the differentiation of gonads takes place that is between the ovary or testes. Now, this slide shows that the egg, first it is a primordial follicle, then it is a primary or secondary follicle and this is totally FSH independent. Once it becomes pre enter or enteral follicle, it is FSH responsive. And then once it is becomes an enteral follicle, from, from enteral follicle, we are trying to find out what is when it becomes a dominant follicle. And that becomes FSH dependent. So, in any cycle you take, day 2 or 3, when you see how much is the AFC, you find 5, 6 of are there or maybe little more and then by day 5 and 6 you find a dominant follicle is there. By 3 weeks you find there are few cells, by 20 weeks there are 6 to 8 million cells in the intrauterine life. By the time the child is born is 1 to 2 million. 1 million is 10 lakhs. At puberty, the remaining eggs are 3 lakhs. At 35 years, there is a nose dive dip. It becomes 25,000. And at menopause, perimenopause, it's about 1,000. If you take age and fertility workup, by 34 years, you should take the WHO definition of one year. But if she is elderly, 35 to 38 years, start investigation at 6 months. And if she is more than 38 years, soon after. Infertility incidence, by 30 years, they say that around 7% people are infertile. By 35, 11 and 12, by 40 years 33 percent and by 45 years nearly 90 percent of the women are infertile. It is very important for a timely identification of patients with poor, poor ovarian reserve is important because then you can tailor made the treatment and you can give her timely help. As for the premature ovarian reserve is concerned, 1% women under 40 years have premature ovarian failure, 1%. 0.1% under 30 and 0.01% under 20 years. Preconceptionally, inability to produce gametes or production of defective gametes can be due to genetic causes resulting in infertility. Definition wise, if there are four oocyte in IVF cycle which are retrieved, you say that the patient has poor ovarian reserve. The prevalence varies from 5 to 25 percent. Over 50 percent in a woman who is 40 years old, and one third of these patients who had a previously poor responders will have a normal response in the current cycle 
or you find nearly two third will have a repeat poor performance. Here you must understand the difference between a young and old. Young patient has got low AFC, but her quality of eggs are better. So her success will be definitely much, much better than poor responder who is old. Now this slide is a great slide telling you about all poor ovarian and reserve test. As to the clinical markers are concerned, age of the woman is the most important factor, most important factor. At 35, the fertility of a woman takes a nose dive. And I did tell you that 6 to the Indian woman, this reserve goes down 6 to 7 years earlier in a good number of patients. Now what are the sonographic markers? Sonographic markers you all know that AFC is the most important. Blood flow is equally important around the follicle. As for the endocrine tests are concerned, of all the static markers which are available, day 3 FSH, day 3 estradiol, they have all given up. The only test which is being used these days in IVF lab is AMH, enter mullerian hormone. As all dynamic tests, they are all given up. They are historical now. Point to remember is the criteria defined by ASHRAE goes by the name of the gynecologist Bologna 2010. He says if the age is 40 years, and he two of the three should be there. AMH if it is less than 1.1 and AFC count if it is between 5 to 7. Ashram had qualified differently, NICE has qualified it differently. So again there is no unanimity. What is poor aware and reserve by Bologna criteria? Two of the following three features must be present. That is advanced maternal age, previous poor aware and reserve, that is less than 3 or 4 oocytes with conventional IVF and abnormal ovarian reserve test that is enteral follicle count is low or AMH is low. Why do we need to know about the poor ovarian reserve tests? Avoid iatrogenic complications, ovulation protocol strategy also we can make and we will use more of NTAG protocol instead of a long protocol. And then sometimes the flare up, especially the short flare up and ultra short flare up are also important. Etiology, age I have just now highlighted, another is genetics. You will find the mother had early menopause. If she has sisters, she will also, you will find the history like them in that. And the iatrogenic problems you all know. If she has had chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or she had an ovarian ovary removed, then you find automatically things will go down. Genetics, the other day Dr. Anu had described to you that the age at which the mother attained, her mother attained menopause is important. Turner syndrome and this fragile X syndrome. Fragile X syndrome patients have a manifestation of a poor ovarian reserve, premature ovarian failure and the next generation the children will manifest at full blown mental retardation. So genetic testing has become very important place during infertility workup. Oocyte and quality and age I did tell you that as the age advances, the number of ovas, more and more ovas become aneuploidy. And in case if they fertilize, either there will not be any pregnancy or there will be early abortions. 
Diagnostic modalities I have highlighted, reserve tests are biochemical and ultrasound tests. Prediction you can make by the age of the patient, the AMH, the AFC count. After the biomarkers in ovarian aging, you can see that antimalarian hormone is <coughs> the best. FSH slowly has been given up. Basal FSH on day 2 and 3, if it is 10 or greater than 10, the chances of conception are less. Basal steadiol, if the levels are crossing 60 to 70, it shows poor ovarian reserve. One thing about the anterior mullerian hormones is that they are produced by the granulosa cells of primary, preantral, and antral follicles when the size is 2 to 6 millimeter. It is supposed to be recruitment regulator. Her batch with thode se thode eggs ko release karte hain, and that prevents all follicles depleting at the same time. showing the same thing. AMH cutoffs in general, we say 2 to 6.5 is great, anything more than 7 suggests that she is hyper responder, anything less than 1 is a poor responder. Diagnostic utility of AMH low AMH and high FSH. These are the two common cutoffs. AMH suppressed during pregnancy and prolonged GnRH analog treatment. Whenever the patient is on oral contraceptive pill, again you find AMH is less. So, the AMH may not retain the accuracy as predicted of ovarian reserve in patients having OCs. This again shows different aspects of AMH. I am not really going to go in this. One point to remember. These days medical treatment to treat ectopic pregnancy is very common. But if you have treated an ectopic pregnancy with methotrexate, it will definitely decrease AMH and AFC. AMH is a better marker than FSH. And you find since the time you have started using it, the mishaps do not occur that frequently. In women, we do not use it anymore, it is not recommended. Clomiphene citrate challenge test is again given up totally. Remaining are enteral follicle count and ovarian volume, where enteral follicle count is much, much better than the ovarian volume. AFC correlates well with the remaining follicles quantity. It can tell you about the what will be the ovarian response to stimulation. And there is a good inter observer reliability. This particular point to be noted that the AMH is better in predicting hyper response. Hyper response. AMH is better in predicting hypo response, means less ova will be produced. And AFC is better in predicting hyper response. If in that particular cycle the recruitment of follicles is more, she is likely to be hyper responder. Ovarian volume, we take three dimensions, but I just now told you that we use AFC is much better. When AFC is compared to basal FSH, basal estradiol and AMH, enteral follicle count and AMH were found to be the most significant predictor of a poor response to ovarian stimulation, but they cannot predict failure to conceive. 
or T are infallible, a point to remember that you can never deny a patient that we will not take you for IVF. Kitna bhi kam se kam reserve hoga, phir bhi 10% chance hai success ke. And if she's ready to take it, you should give it to her. Current ovarian stimulation approaches kya hai? Aiming for maximum number of oocytes, time consuming and complex stimulation regimes are there which takes a lot of high cost. So, coming to the role of adjuvants. DHEA supplementation is very important. So, anybody who has failing aware and reserve, please supplement this particular thing. And I prefer DHEA with melatonin. Melatonin gives a good sleep. She relaxes completely. And you find the response in such patients are good. In my own experience, we find, found that in case if you use in 20 patients, 6%, 6 patients will definitely have pregnancy. It improves follicle microenvironment and it improves oxygen level in the follicular fluid. Minimum dose time which you have you need to give it to it is minimum 4 months. And I advise my patients till the time she become pregnant, she should not stop it. As for the aspirin is concerned, no improvement. As for the arginine is concerned, people are using in IVF cycles, but the doses which has to be used is 6 gram sachet. Oocyte cryopreservation has had a really breakthrough. You use a milder protocols, every cycle you retrieve the eggs and then pull up these eggs and once you find the eggs are 3 or 4, you transfer the pregnancy rate is the same. The only thing is that these patients have to pull up in 3 to 4 cycles and then you find that the results are there. So, the people have to have patience, the IVF staff also has to have a patience. Now, stem cells are extracted from the bone marrow and it is injected into the ovarian cortex. Promising results are expected, but still the whole technique is experimental. Now, the third technique is going to come that from these old eggs, now you have heard about three party induction. Here the mitochondria of the eggs are taken away, it is replaced by the mitochondria of the donor and then you find that fertilization is good. Egg donation is the final answer, but everybody does not agree for this. So, what to do? We need to decide what protocol to use, decide about the drug and decide about the dosage. But whatever you do, you should do a timely treatment which goes optimal, individualize the therapy, be safe, use adjuvants, cryopreserve the eggs at the right time, augment and counsel them finally if everything fails for egg donation. Thank you very much.